今天有幸为您播出其中一场睿智开示。师徒之间节目《观音法门最圆满》二集之一，一九九二年五月十二日，以英语讲于台湾西湖，台湾又称福尔摩沙。Thank you for coming. Already three times, I heard it. Three days, every day, happy birthday. 有没有给他们什么特别的东西啊？刚印心，都是刚印心的，还可以吗？你们在那边在做什么？在做生意的。做什么生意？做这个买卖，做油纸的买卖。啊。你呢？他在印布。印布。嗯。Shipping company. Ah, what do you ship? A shipping agency. It is a shipping company. It is a shipping agency. 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 保险公司。And this one, ah, Vietnamese, ah. Hmm, what do you do? Sewing. Ah, ah ha. He's going also. All right. Wish you a good journey. Hmm. Thank you. 叫什么饼干蛋糕？有没有给一人一个就行了 ？I appreciate your love. Hmm. 谢谢你们的爱心，花那么多时间。经过那么多麻烦，才能够来这里哈，嗯，这样而已。他们还在吃，先拿。啊，这边好的吗？韩国的。Extra Korean cake 是额外的。Going no， not、嗯。Going tomorrow。假呀。南坛女都的耶，反正蛮舒服嘛呢哈。啊，来没白牙了来的哈。啊。<笑> Okay, fine. Some more. Hmm. Some more? No, no more. Huh? This is very special. You have? Everyone has? Ah. 还有什么吗？没嘛哈。看电视然后走。行了行了。他们自己还有吗？一人一包。对。嗯。You take some extra things home for your children. 给小孩子。嗯，等一下还有。Okay, 给小孩子。你们自己来这边几天吃喝玩乐够了，根本不用再要什么了。嗯。啊、uh, ，In these days you have eaten enough. All of my stocks gone out. <laughs> you don't need to take anything for yourself, but we will give you something for your friends and children, and your family members. Okay, that's all. But nothing for you. <laughs> you have enough. Too fat to go home. <laughs> go, go on diet for two weeks. <laughs> No, not really, huh? Not really. Everything here we give with love. It's not the material things. It's difficult to stay together in this physical planet, but we stay together inside. Huh? 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 We stay together inside. 啊，听不懂国语。我去跟他讲。啊哈，啊哈，都是泰国人的，听不懂国语啊。No English, no Chinese, no Vietnamese. What to do? Kap kun ka. Sawadi. Sawadi ka. Men sawadi ka. Ah, sawadi ka. So you can watch some kung fu and go home. Mình Việt Nam đi về mình giỏi hả? Ừ. Hảo. Nào mình xem xem điện thoại, hảo không? Hảo sư, không cần xem. À? Cần xem điện thoại, hảo sư, cần đặt chỗ. Ừ. Ừ. Cần điện thoại hả? Hả, chuyên sâu một chút hả? Phải nghe cho mình nghe. Okay. 
。流浪是什么？看，心放放松一点哈。看电视完了，我还也许还会跟他们聊天一下。中国ではかか昔から宇宙に満ち満ちた「気」と呼ばれた未知のエネルギーが存在すると信じられています人間はこの「気」を体内に取り込み自ら厳しい訓練をすることによって「気」を自由自在に操ることができます「気」を体の一点に集中し一瞬のうちに気を倒すことができるのです気を倒すことができるのですだからあのー。こんな先生特にあの今、中国でもね、チャンピオンなんですよね。OK、好了哈。So, it's very good. You have everything here. 气功、功夫、vegetarian diet, cakes without eggs, <笑> wine without alcohol, and 气功 without so much, <笑> so much trouble. <笑> yeah? So, very, very happy. Very happy, huh? And this, we don't know when you are allowed. Oh, you cannot come back too much, too, 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 too often. You have to spend all your money. <laughs> That's all, okay? Also, I probably do something else. Mm. Actually, I, I was thinking maybe you can come all the time, but then this is, what is the use? Huh? Occasionally come is okay. Huh? What is the use? Come in here. I think that's our money, but I think this is your money. <laughs> my money, yes. That's everything, why you should not spend my money. <laughs> everything we have now, that's from you. Yeah. Keep them for me. Yeah. <laughs> Take care of your family and practice at home. Thank you. Even if you see me once in a lifetime, it should be enough. Enough for, for the whole heaven. <laughs> And practice at home. Huh? Many people don't see me at all. They also have very good experiences. Master don't need to be anywhere physically. No. You see, people they they just practice a little qigong from Dantian only, not the not the wisdom, and they still don't have to touch you and they can contact you, control you. You see. So even if we practice with the wisdom, the the. The Almighty Power、I、don't need to be anywhere.、I、don't even need to 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 do anything.、Uh, no problem. Okay, don't worry. We always together. You cannot run away from me. Don't worry. <laughs> My chi is very far. <laughs> this this people chi is only about three meter long, but <laughs> My chi is three thousand. No. Three thousand billions, numerous <laughs> meters long. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Okay, I stay here and just do something. <laughs> yes, very important business like eating cake and drinking tea. Yeah, and then you stay home and dance. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's a pity that the world. They they are practicing, they wasting a lot of time just to practice one corner of the wisdom, and and even then、uh, they have to practice very hard, one lifetime commitment, in order to achieve what they have achieved, like curing people's sickness. And even then it take one year or two years. But you have heard it in our school, people just get initiation or even not initiation, and they get cured at home. Cancer, third degree even. Many many letters we have. So you, you see, our our power is limitless. If we touch that source of power, then then we are in for good. It's better than just touch one corner of it. Touch the right button, the control tower, and it control the whole thing. So we can do many miracles without moving one finger. Because you see that when they're doing qi gong like that, it's also very tiring for the finger. You know, If you do it all day long, one patient after another. You know, I think I give up. <laughs> yeah, 
and then you go home and you have to need your wife to massage for you. So what's the point? <laughs> you, you have somebody and somebody else have to help you. <laughs> then I cannot do that. So I chose the Kuan Yin method. <laughs> yeah, the best. Then you, after you, you get initiation and you practice Kuan Yin method, just sit there two and a half hours and then everything is done. <laughs> yeah. And then I can do many other things as hobbies, hobbies. See, if, uh, if, uh, without funny method, I feel like uh, different. But now when they're watching them, I feel that's something else. There's nothing. Uh, very, very, no, not important. Yes, actually when we practice Kuan Yin Method, include all this. That's why all the Qigong, many Qigong masters came and studied with us. Yes. They, they, they have talked about this in some of the retreat. Yeah, one of the China top Qigong master also became <laughs> our followers. Yes. And he had good experiences. Qigong is just one of those things. One of the exercise of the prana, that's what the Indian call them, prana. But we call qi. Yeah. Prana is a vital 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 energy and uh, it's supposed to regulate our body, you know, like uh, regulate the heat, the coolness and the digestion and the, uh, the, 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 the flowing of blood in, that, in the body, that's called prana. This is a kind of vital, vital air and we can control that also, but we need not, we should not do that. Because uh, the Creator has already put them in order before we are born. Therefore, it's automatic, automatically our body is warm and feel hungry, and when we eat, it's digest. Mm. And the best, uh, the best cure for everything is Kuan Yin Method. It put everything in order without touching anything, without doing anything. And the Master just eat and sleep and watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> the master don't do nothing. <laughs> Did you see me doing anything since a few days you came here? Nothing. Yeah, yeah. just uh, hang around with you because you want to see me. <laughs> Even when I eat cake, they have to eat with you, drink tea with you, so that you can see me, that I'm really a normal person. I eat and drink, <laughs> but then, then everything is done. Hmm. Therefore, in the old time, people say, uh, sleeping, eating, walking, drinking is also Chan, also Zen. Yes, because the Zen is, is a word for jhana, wisdom, or dhyana, meditation. It's the power of, of the universe. And that power is connected within ourselves. Just like every light here is connected with the source of the electric powerhouse, understand? We are a part of this powerhouse and we can use as much as we can <laughs> accompany and we can digest. The bigger your light, the more electric, yes. So make sure your light is durable <laughs> and lasting, otherwise electric come and pop, pop finished. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, the best, the best thing that happened to us is Kuan Yin Method. The best thing ever happened to us since many thousand, million trillions of eons is Kuan Yin Method. We arrived at the last stage as a final solution. Nothing else is better. You can practice Qigong for thousands of years, but you arrive nowhere. After you die, you have no more Qi. Gone, yeah. That vital, vital prana, uh, vital breath only stay as long as you have a body in order to regulate the body. And after you're gone, it's gone. But the other, the wisdom, the all-pervading power is always there, never die, never born. And we are that. It doesn't matter what kind of instrument we contain that power. <laughs> it's still the same power. 
It's never change, never die. So we will never die. Hell and death are only for people who doesn't know themselves, who doesn't believe in the everlasting power, who is not led to believe and to know that. Otherwise, we never die. We have to know that, and we, are, we know through Kuan Yin Method. We know that sometimes we can leave the body even during sleep, during meditation, and become ourselves, free and flying around. The best thing, the best, best power, the best Kung Fu is Kuan Yin Method. <laughs> you see, I, I, I have no, no martial, martial art power. <laughs> But all the martial arts master came <laughs> to my feet. I beat them all <laughs> with the power of love, <laughs> yes, and wisdom, yes. Every art in this world is not everlasting. It's not the ultimate. Yes, only the invisible art. The the uh, the art of the wise is always lasting, and beat everything. Beat all the violence, all the let's say the physical power in this world. Many people uh, got cured of mental or physical diseases due to their faith in the Master, even. <laughs> not, not to talk about initiation and not to talk about their own effort. Yes, it is because the one who masters Kuan Yin Method masters every art of the universe. Healing, surgeon, <laughs> dentist, <laughs> uh, angelic help in accidents, on and uh, reviving the death, everything. The one who master Kuan Yin, Kuan Yin method, master everything. And you also, as you are going on developing your mastership, you will master slowly, slowly, one by one of the arts. And you, you know many things, by the way. One by one, you master them. Not one by one. One hundred, one thousand by one thousand, yes. It's just because you have no opportunity to use this, so you do not know what you have yet. When you encounter the sudden, sudden uh, trouble or danger or sudden problem that you have to solve, then, then you know what you have. But practice you must and faith you must have. Faith is what? Not the blind belief, but the higher, the nobler idea of who you are, of what you can do and how great you truly have been and will be. That is the faith, the true faith. Not the faith in my power, not the faith that I could heal you, I could help you, but the faith that the almighty power is within me, within you. And that can do everything. Understand? Mm. You do not follow a master. You follow the great principle of the universe, which the master reminds you. Do not follow anybody if that person talk nonsense <laughs> and counter your evolutionary process. Follow anyone whose teaching is grand, is noble, is high, inspi inspires you to become greater, to have more confidence and more wisdom with yourself. That's the highest master. Understand? The master might have different personalities, might not suit your taste. <laughs> how the master dress, how the master speak, how 
he eats his meals, he might eat bread and you eat rice. I eat rice, you eat bread, but that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. If the master knows the highest principle of life, the noblest idea of mankind, and teach you that, that is the right master. Don't look for the miracles. Don't look for personalities. Don't look for the outer appearance. Don't look for his way of life. Look for the principle that the master teaches, which is very logical and evolutionary, upward. Understand? Anyone teach downward is the devil. Anyone teach upward is the master of high order. Of course, we will say, you will say, everyone can say that. Everyone can say we are God, we have Buddha nature inside. Everybody say that. <laughs> but saying and having the power behind it is different. Understand? The real teaching is not verbal. Therefore, I don't mean anyone who talk good, you know, who tell you the good principle. That's a great master. No, I mean the real teaching. The, teach, the teaching that comes from the whole being of the master. You understand? From the whole vital principle, from the whole energy, from the master. You don't listen with ears alone. You listen with all your soul and you understand it by your own wisdom. That is the real teaching, not by words. Yes, Because many teachers teach by words. I don't mean that. So we must know. There's a difference between uh, copies <laughs> and an original. Yeah. So there is a convincing power behind the Master's words, <laughs> not only talking. Talk, everybody can talk, yes. Everyone sometimes can talk mightily, <laughs> but we can feel the difference. And what he talks, he cannot do. Understand? He talks about, I have realized God, I have got almighty power, but he has nothing. He cannot prove it. <laughs> he cannot help you by any way. That is no good. Yeah? Therefore, the real teaching is the invisible power that goes with the words, with every promise that the Master makes to you, that will be fulfilled. <laughs> Otherwise, just a waste of time <laughs> listening to bubbling. <laughs> you can do that yourself also. <laughs> Everyone can imitate each other and say, Wow, oh, God Almighty, I know God, God is inside me for sure. <laughs> yeah, nothing changed. They have no supportive power. Therefore, they still remain the way they are, without knowing what God is, without being able to make use of that so-called God power within themselves to better their lives, to cure their own sickness, to help them in disaster, to solve their daily problems. Understand? So that's the difference between talking and real teaching. Real teaching has to go through a physical master because only life begets life. Understand? Yes. We have life in this world. So the power has to course through a life pose in order to come to us. We cannot learn from the dead. <laughs> If any past masters want to help us, then they have to be reincarnated again, or they have to use a body in order to pass the mas message through. Electric, no doubt, is there, <laughs> but we need a wire, you know, an instrument, and plug and all that in order to receive it and to make use of it. All the electrical engineers and manufacturers can talk about electric, but if they don't have it, <laughs> then all the theories they have learned is of no use. Yes. 
It is a pity that all the churchgoers and all the temple worshippers do not understand that whatever they have learned from the temples or from the, uh, from the Holy Scriptures have to be verified, have to be put into practice. Understand? They lack practice. They know all the theory, theory only. Just like uh, the, the, the medical students go to school or they learn from books and never experience. Even, even then, even you learn scientific things like uh, medical, medical care, you, you have to put that into practice. You learn so many hundreds of books and so many ten of years, but then you have to practice, even after graduation. You have to put it into practice. After many years, then you are a true doctor. Otherwise, not yet. You just get a piece of paper with a theoretical knowledge, no experience no verification of what you have learned, whether it's true or not, whether you can manipulate what you have learned in the school. Just like if you go to learn to drive a car, for example, very simple one, and you read all the books, red signal, green signal, and a steering wheel, key, and brake, and gas. But even then, <laughs> when you come to handle the real car, it's different, no? Yes. You might break some of the uh, electric poles before, <laughs> before you succeed. It is true, yes. Everything needs to be verified. So no need to believe in any doctrine if it doesn't offer you the real proof. We must demand always proof. Of course, to some it takes longer time and to some it takes quicker. At least the neighbors or the same classmate have proof. So then we can blame ourselves for being stupid. For example, when we were in high school, yeah, the same teacher teaches the whole class of 50 students. And he teaches many theory of mathematics and some kind of experiment with, with the laboratory. Yeah. Okay. So everybody can uh, learn that by heart first. The the what's that? The formula, formulas, yeah, yes. And then uh, put that into use, right? Like you put how much sulfur and how much uh, 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 something of other chemical substance together, and it mix together and it become an explosion or whatever it, or the outcome of that. But you have to put the right amount, right, and use the right instrument. Uh, and other classmates experience what the, doc, what the teacher says and have the same result, and we don't. Some of the, the stupid students don't. That is not <laughs> due to the teachers teaching the wrong thing, it's just due to the student who hasn't learned correctly or too slow in brain uh, IQ, <laughs> too low, <laughs> IQ is too low. Understand? For at least many of the classmates succeed. Then we know it is our fault. We have to relearn it or we have to apply more intelligence, more diligence, okay? Same, same in our school, in our um, practice of running method. Many students go ahead very fast, many students lag behind. But at least there are many who succeed, so at least those lack behind students can only blame themselves. Yeah. But at least we have proof, you understand? At least those students are satisfied that the teacher is correct and the method will be correct. So probably we have to apply more, more diligence and more intelligence. Understand? So, of course, in one class, <laughs> cannot be possible that all the students are the same levels. Mm. Similar to our, our school. <laughs> We can call it a school. Mm. Uh, many students advance ahead, but many students still struggle. Mm. But even then, we have proof enough to prove that we are on the way, the correct path, so we don't waste our time to look for other path and delay our progress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no way, huh? Okay. Then you are... Last one. Last one. <laughs> For me also. <laughs>
Yes. It is difficult mm, to know which one is the correct, but at least we see the result. You know, by by your fruits you shall be known. Right? Uh, the apple tree is known by its fruits. The orange trees are known by the orange fruits. So if we practice this quaining method, and we have so many proof from different source reliable students, yes, of the same teacher, same method, same school, then we know that we are on the right track, understand? If, even if we do not have so much as we want, we have so little, uh, always you complain, I don't have so, enough experience and all that and others. But when I give you a lot of experience, you are so scared. Yeah. yeah, and uh, if your bulb are so small, only seventy watt, watt, and if you want hundred watt, it burns. Yeah, so slowly, <laughs> yeah, buy a new one, and then <laughs> can experience. <laughs> Otherwise, <I> can't together. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Many people they say, "Wow, we cannot have experience." But when the master just take them out of their body a little bit, and they have no no earth or nothing, so, ah! they immediately run back to the body again. This is kind of a portable suitcase. Every time you jump back in, scared, too scared to live without the body. For example, we have seen some of the uh, uh, scientific films about the extraterrestrial people, huh? Yeah, they have no body, huh? Yeah, and their head look bald, huh? bald, and their body is look like nobody, huh? Ah. Can you imagine you live like that? Sometimes it feels scary, you know? But they are more free. They are more free, they have more power, and they are not yet on the top of the creation. So when we are used to with this body, it is scary to live without. <laughs> yeah, it's true, we have to learn the new freedom, the new way of life, and it takes time. Just like many people who are put into prisons for a long time, they're scared to go out. They're scared of open, large space because they're so used to with their small cell. That happened. Many people return back to prison and beg the police to, <laughs> to put them back in. They cannot bear the free world outside. They're not used to it being not controlled. <laughs> they're not used to it being uh, uh, take care of themselves, what time to get up, what time to eat, what time to cook, how to work. And they're so used with taking orders and the regular time of sleeping and used with people taking care of them, even though under control. They like that. They like babying. <laughs> they like people to baby them. Some people are like that. Similarly, the people of this world are so used to with being <sighs> prisoned. Yes that when they are given the freedom, <laughs> they don't know how to handle it. Therefore, we have to take it easy. Take it easy with you, because you're very fragile, very unused to with freedom. Thousand billions of years being enslaved to this physical world and body. It's not easy to let go, even though it's a prison house. People are used to with their environment so much that it's difficult to change. I told you many times different examples. When I was in Malaysia, for example, the government of Malaysia, being very kind, made beautiful houses and buildings very strong in nature and clean to give to the poor people. And the poor people who live in a very small, small, dark, low and hot kind of uh, uh, metallic uh, roof hut, you know. And then so government build next door or across the street, the big buildings, empty, and give it to these people, free, but they don't want to come in. <laughs> they move in for a while and they move back in, move back to, to their house again. Yeah, <laughs> they prefer that. <laughs> And maybe more earth or more grass, more land around them, they don't know. 
They're not used to with living together in a big block of house, even though look clean and nice. They probably prefer not like the concrete, concrete floor and the walls. Similar to our monks here. Sometimes I, I want to buy, build some kind of a wooden cottage, you know, a small hermitage for them. But they don't want it. They use it with their tents. They like it. Zip in, zip out fast. <laughs> yeah, you guys use it and no trouble, no taking care. If it's a wooden house, you have to paint it every one year, two or three years, and keep it clean. Be careful of the, the, the moth, yeah, and the ants and other kind of things. Yeah, you have to keep it clean. Dusting it or washing it every day. <laughs> but the tent, no need, no need. Zip in, ship, and zip out, you're out. <laughs> yes, yes. And even when the typhoon comes, it's only, it's only crumble into <laughs> one bag, including them inside. And next morning, they just hang it up again. You know, very easy. And no hurt, no, no, no wounded. No danger because the tent is very light. Yes. Even earthquake or no problem. You just hit the plastic ceiling. <laughs> very light, yeah, everlasting. <laughs> so your head will not have to practice qigong. <laughs> more more relaxed, you know. So people are like that, huh? Just practice. No, all the people, yes. So just practice and then you will arrive. It will come. Understand? Sometimes you already passed that stage and you don't know it. You keep thinking, why, why? I haven't had experience. You passed it. You passed without knowing. Understand? Sometimes it's like that. Do you think now I sit here every day and see big light and big Buddhas and uh, what? Hearing all kind of uh, music, all that? What for? Understand what I mean? If I sit here and wait every day for the light and all that. What for? Anyhow, you become the light. You become the sun. You don't need sunlight, you become the sun. You don't need the doctors, you become one. Understand? Yes. yes. When I was in the Asian tour last month, last few months, one of our monks, she's supposed to pass the customs when we go out of the airport. But then she was always thinking of me. All the way through, she was thinking, oh, just when can we see Master again? We just part with her. If the heart feels still feel very sour, you know, from the from the separation, and she was thinking, thinking, Master's heart feeling so very painful. Just separate, half an hour or something. Yeah, or one hour even. And then she just think like that, and she passed through the custom, and nobody checked her even. <laughs> and after she go out, she said, but where is the custom? Where is the custom? And the people say, you passed it. <laughs> Gone, out. <laughs> and she doesn't even know yet. And then she was looking for the custom on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and other people said to her, you passed it, it's gone, you're out now, you're free. <laughs> she could not hardly believe it, understand? So sometimes it happened to the practitioners of the Kwanin method that you're talk so concentrated, that you're so uh, eager to understand, you, you, to, to reach some levels, and you passed it and you don't know it. Same with every other kind of studies, yeah. Sometimes you pass the exam of the high school, but you do not think that you are any wiser than when you were in the, in the, the, the lower grade, no? You don't know, feel much difference, but you passed it. You have become a high school graduate, graduated instead of primary school, but you do not feel that you have grown any wiser or any much more terrific <laughs> in length or in wisdom, no? Yeah, you just study every day bit by bit without even uh, yeah, worrying or without even much intention, and then you pass the exam. 
just like we grow up every day also. Today I met one of my classmates and she said that 23 years now that we have met each other, since last time. Yeah, and she's one in here. And we talk about the old day, it seems like yesterday. But actually it's 23 years already, in the past, since I was with her in the high school. And so many things has happened. Everyone has grown up in body and in wisdom, but we don't feel much, understand? I don't feel much. For example, uh, you call me your master, understand? And I'm supposed to reach the high level of must of of running method. Yeah? Very powerful, have a lot of power and everything, etc., etc. I feel no difference from you. I feel no different from before. Except <laughs> when problems arise or that I have to confront with some of the ignorant people, then I realize there's a great difference. To realize only and feel a little bit frustrated, but no no proud, no arrogance, no no big deal, you understand? To know it but not to know. Understand? I don't know where what's go wrong. Just know that there's a difference. It's difficult to <laughs> to get through with each other. Difficult to connect the two to mind. It feels so different. That's all. But no big deal. Understand? So, like that. I don't know when I became the Buddha. <laughs> that's all of you know, but I don't know. All of you know that I have become Buddha. I don't know up to now. I don't know that I have become Buddha. I don't know where, which part of the body has become Buddha <laughs> or in which way. <laughs> Understand? It's just that sometimes <laughs> that when I confront it with the, the mass ignorance, then I realize there is a difference because it's so difficult to get my idea across. So what they understand, <laughs> I cannot imagine. What I understand, they cannot grasp. Yeah. So then I realize there is a great difference between the people in this world. And sometimes it is so the, the, the gap is so great that I feel very difficult to live in this world. Understand? That is when I realize I have something different. Otherwise I don't feel anything. You feel I have anything? No. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's good that we don't feel it, understand? Otherwise, how can we live? It's a burden to carry wisdom, you understand? <laughs> it's a burden to carry your own Buddha nature. <laughs> if it has weight, if it has track, trace, if it has kind of uh, presence, then it's a burden for you to carry it around and to to, to deal with it every day. And when you go to sleep, you don't know where to put your wisdom. <laughs> when you go to the market, you don't know how, <laughs> yeah, 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 how, how to carry it around. You know, people will see it. And it is a very clumsy business. Hmm. So therefore, it is good that you don't know. But you do have, you do have everything. Sometimes the one who complains the most are the one who has the most. Yeah. I told you this word is very, very complicated, <laughs> very upside down. Yeah. The people who spend a lot of money are the people who look the worst, you know, on clothes or whatever, understand? And, and for example, the same with every country, or the same with every household budget. Yeah? It's not how much you earn, it's how much you save that makes you uh, economically stable. It is very funny. Therefore, it's very uh, seldom that a government can be clean of financial black, <laughs> black spots. <laughs> because, for example, I read, I read somewhere he was a prime minister, and you know he has a lot of money, probably. Yeah, and everybody thinks it's a glorious position to be a prime minister. But he had to earn his money in a very hard way, by writing, in order to meet up with his expenses. Because 
as a prime minister, you have to, uh, how to say, have to uh, welcome so many political guests from different parts of the world. And you cannot just treat them lightly, understand? Have banquets, dinners, parties, and all this costs a lot of money. Sometimes ago, one of the Taiwanese men, yeah, very wealthy, just because he wanted to show off his wealth, to make a face with the world, he spent millions of dollars for one party, invite all the people of, of the good position to his party, spend millions of money, of dollars, just to show. And every, t every day in the world, when people exchange business, dinner, and negotiate something, they spend a lot, a lot of money. One dinner costs many tens of thousands of dollars for each person. In not including first-class hotel, first-class air ticket, <laughs> first-class everything, limousine. Understand? Everything costs a lot of money. And people believe that if they do not put up a show like that, the other partner will not look up on them, will, not look, down, will look down upon them and do not do business with them. Do not feel that they have enough power, enough money to match up with their business. Therefore, people just put up one show after another and it costs so much money, understand? To be in that position, you have to host many people from different countries and you cannot just, uh, you know, treat them lightly because that's the way they think they have to be done. It's not like us here, Everyone come as welcome. Whoever come is the same. Understand? Yes. We feed uh, many thousands of people, but with a very low economical scale, because we do everything ourselves. We make things simple, clean, and nice. Therefore, we don't need to take money. Understand? Because we are well organized. We do things with wisdom and love, not with money. You don't need money to take care of people. It just know how, just know how. I have told you many times already that I dress very well, but my dress are cheaper than any of your pair of trousers, the whole thing, including, including my shoes. For example, these shoes, 200 NT, beautiful, no? Even cheaper than the monk's shoes. Yeah, I look beautiful. 200 NT, how much? Ten dollars? No. Eight dollars? Eight dollars. Not even, huh? Seven to eight dollars. Yes. It looks beautiful, no? And your shoe cannot be so cheap, except you buy slippers. Yeah? Flip-flop. <laughs> yes. And, and my dress, it looks good, but it doesn't cost, I think, this dress, not more than 500 NT or something. Huh? Oh, by quiet. Wait, wait, wait. Do it in, huh? Do that. Five hundred NT. How much is that? Less than twenty dollars. Less than twenty dollars. It looks so beautiful and elegant. Yeah? You think I spend a lot of money? Never. I don't believe in spending. I believe in earning only. <laughs> I believe in earning and saving but not spending. Therefore, you see. People in this world, they live without wisdom. That's why they run into endless of trouble. That's why it's difficult to find a clean government. Li Kuan Yew of Li Kuan Yew of uh, Singapore, he says something very meaningful. He say, in in order to keep a country economically stable, huh? We have to taking care of the budget at, ho at home, you understand? National budget, have to control it. You cannot, cannot spend rashly, understand? That's how they keep it that way. It's not what they earn also, but what they not spend. It's very difficult to fight just government. And, and also the people who, who, who support that, 
support that idea. Therefore, Singapore stayed very long stable, one of the tigers of Asia, because they, it's not that they earn a lot or their country is very wealthy or very big, but it's how they manage financially, understand? They know how much they should spend, how much they should save. Huh. Here also, you see, we don't accept offerings, we don't advertise for offerings, and we don't take money from people. Yeah, whatever comes is okay, if it doesn't come, okay. We, we don't bother about that. But we're never in financial problem because we, we just spend what necess necessary, but we do not over, overdo things, understand? When you came here to us, yeah, you eat so well. You have all kind of fruits, all kind of beautiful cakes, you understand? But we have bought them from the cheapest source. And all the cakes, mostly we make them sell, ourselves, understand? Fresh, nutritious, and tastes good. And nothing spent a lot. These cakes that you eat these days, mostly are made from our own kitchen. And all the food are made from our own kitchen. Vegetable fresh, nutritious, and don't spend a lot of money, understand? We feed thousands of people, but we never go bankrupt. We never have to, to take blackmail in money or... <laughs> yeah. So I think the best government, the clean government, has to practice some discipline, has to know some wisdom, meditation. That's why in the old time, Chinese people say, Xiu Shen, Xi Jia, Zi Guo, Ping Tian Xia. First, we have to practice self discipline, and then we can take care of the family, and then we can rule the nation, and then we can pacify the whole world. That is very, very wise. But it's a pity not many governments apply this wisdom to their practical use of ruling the nations. That's why our world is going bankrupt. That's why many uh, powerful nations is downgrading because of not knowing this principle. I think it is difficult to become a clean government, except like our organization. You know, everyone is dedicated for the good cause of the whole and not for ourselves. Then, only then, is a true government spirit is born. Otherwise, it's difficult. If you run after the world, run with the world, and matching with each other about how great a party would be, how, <laughs> how much we spend more than the, the opponent, then we are always in trouble. If we imitate the world, we make competition with the world, then we are always in trouble. We have to do different. We have to begin anew if we want to turn the table and make our world become a paradise. Everyone must apply this principle, understand? Must use our, our wisdom in all things, even in the way we dress, understand? Hmm? We have to go with our, with our position and ability to earn the money. Cannot go with a neighbor. But in order to do that, we have to be stable inside, actually. Because most of people like to compete with each other. They cannot bear it if neighbor have a Benz, Mercedes, for example. Understand? Therefore, we have to be first stable inside. Therefore, we have to meditate <laughs> and find our own true worth so that our self-confidence will never be wavered. It doesn't matter how many people say bad things about us or criticize us or try to shake our faith about the way we have to do things. That's why meditation is first important. Meditation stabilizes our men mentality, wise, uh, widen our vision of life, open many new ideas, and then we live a very fulfilled life without having to struggle very hard. Understand? 
Therefore, people like to come to us because they feel very relaxed, no pressure of worrying that whether we have to give money and how much, and who knows who give how much and all that. We don't bother about this. Everybody come, they know that they're truly welcome, are truly loved, and truly are supported to develop their own wisdom, their own better uh, way of life. That's why people come and don't want to leave. <laughs> I have be, even been in some of the so-called spiritual ashrams in India, but still you have pressure of having to donate something. They count very, <laughs> uh, one week how much and that. Pro they don't take it more, but probably you still have to think about that, understand? And there will be talk about who doesn't give and who stay longest and who give less and stay long, and who give more and stay less and all that. <laughs> yeah, they talk about that, even though they don't openly tell you, or maybe they do, but you still feel it's something, you know, pressing, and it's, it's not easy. You understand? Mm. Uh, here we also allow you the freedom to, to uh, contribute, <laughs> to protect your dignity, should you want to do it. Understand? But we have, give no pressure or no hint in nothing because we don't need that. Whatever you give is already too much because we don't need it. We already don't need it. You understand? Even before you give, already too much. So whenever I have a lot of money in the bank, I start to worry. It's trouble me. What to do now, next? How to spend that? Where? You know? So I have to start to organize how to spend money. <laughs> Of course, we spend it in all in a good way, you know what I mean? So whenever you see we print a lot of books for free, uh, distributing and all that, that's, you know, when I have a lot of money in the bank <laughs> and I have to think of the way to share it with the world in the best possible way, understand? Yeah. So uh, that's why the world is, is topsy-turvy because people worry about having not enough money and here we worry when we have too much. Uh, a little bit much, not too much, really, understand? But what shall you do if you have about, uh, the, uh, even a um, few hundred thousand dollars sitting in the bank? It's nonsense to let it sit there, right? The money has to circulate in the world and to, to produce something. That is, that is the way money has, has to be used, and that is good use of money. Otherwise, the world will go bankrupt. And the economical uh, uh, situation will become kind of uh, stagnant, you know, stopped. And there's no good for, for, for the whole world even. Fancy if everybody put money in the bank and nobody invests and nobody do anything. <laughs> and you just get some interest out of it and live a, a kingly life. Then the world have nothing, understand? After some years, it's, it's gone, gone down. That's what happened to the world right now. Saving and using credit. <laughs> the one who has save a lot for interest and the one who doesn't have use credit. <laughs> so everybody wants something but not get something out but don't want to put something in. Understand? You cannot use credit if the money in the bank doesn't circulate and make interest to back up that credit. Understand? Therefore, the, the more credit cards, the more bankrupt. Trouble. Yes. Therefore, in the old time, in the Tao, Tao Te Ching, Lao Tzu, he says, in the ancient time, the great kings, they rule the nation without ruling. They uh, let the people free to do what they want. It is only because of these kings were true in their position, in their name. They were there just to serve people without selfish motive. In the Tibet, they use monks in the government in order to rule their nations. I dare not say it was the best, but it was better than many other countries. And should those monks have been enlightened, then it's a very good idea, very logical. Understand? But they have to be enlightened. 
they have to be enlightened. Otherwise, it's the same thing, same thing. They also get a lot of offering, a lot of salaries, and they decorate their house with all kind of beautiful and expensive things, understand? Then it becomes the same thing again. Therefore, it is best for any government <laughs> if they get enlightenment. Then there can be any position. And their power can dure forever and the people will not complain. Hmm. It's very difficult, very difficult. Hmm? <laughs> so, okay, you know now that you are on the best path. I no need to advertise all the time. <laughs> But just between us, we talk again to remind each other to keep our practice and enjoy life at the same times. Whatever we have, we enjoy. But we do not, n must not seek and crave for enjoyment. That's all. Understand? Just be natural. Enjoy what you have. Keep what you earn and say what you can especially saving time for meditation and enjoy the rest. Yeah? Ah, okay. <clears throat> Everything I do is a teaching, even the way I dress, the way I do things. is also teaching for you. So you know that the world is upside down. I wear so beautiful dress and so cheap. Half of your clothes, not even one quarter of the price of your clothes. And I look more elegant. <laughs> That's what you always say. And I also think that way. I prefer this than jean and all that. It's all expensive and doesn't look feminine at all. At least I become a feminine Buddha. I don't want a masculine. <laughs> I have not changed my sex after becoming Buddha. I have no intention to. It's nice to be a woman. We are the beautiful sex. Yeah? <laughs> I have not lost my femininity, right, through becoming enlightened. We have not need to. We're just the way we are. Be, be whatever it is, yes. Enlightened is something inside and not outside. <laughs> hmm. You see, huh? You see, if I do not do it by example, you would not understand what I mean. Yeah, and you will not see it clearly if there's no, no pre, uh, obvious result. Understand? So I teach by examples more than by word. But since you <laughs> like to listen also because you have two ears, you think it's a pity not to use them. <laughs> I have to. Talk something. <laughs> also, to make it clearer for you, it's also fine. Yeah. Our ears are also there to hear good things. Our eyes are also there to absorb good examples in order to enrich our life. Yes. So that we live a happier, a more fulfilled, and more glorious life until we leave this world and for a more glorious life. Mm. But we do not need to make this life ugly <laughs> before we leave it. <laughs> Give a bad impression for the next generation, you know. <laughs> so, you go back to where you used to be <laughs> and we see each other again. Huh? Don't worry, this is still the same world. I have not escaped. <laughs> see you, huh? No problem. Mm -hmm. And if you want a goodbye touch, you can come. <laughs> it's not necessary, but I know you like it. <laughs>
so serious, it's okay. If the good one, then I train them and teach them better. And if a lousy one, I just leave them alone, then it's okay. Uh, just make it a game and play. Then it's, it's more bearable for me. Yeah. So I thought this is a good way, this is a good way, you know. That, uh, that we have so many things in, in videos and cassettes and, and picture and books. Yeah, of different tastes, a different teach, different uh, uh, theory. Yeah. And I think work without play is no, no, no. Yes, it's no balance. Yes. So I started to play a little bit. <laughs> Before I also was very dead serious. I I didn't play, you know. And I thought because I didn't have disciples, then I did not know the stress of having so many disciples and also having to take care of them very well as well, not just to have disciples and then leave them grow the way they want. Yes, if uh, you can leave them the way they want, then no need to have disciples, right? Uh, because you must teach them and give them the right thinking. And for that, this is so burdensome for me. You know, I, I'm more uh, not so serious. I cannot be too serious. And then so afterward, I start to play a little bit so I can rest. I can li last a little bit longer. <laughs> it, feels, it feels more, more relaxing yeah, for disciples also, that they're not so scared of me. <laughs> Come in I say, and look at me always like this, you know, <laughs> so serious. Because the human nature is very frail, very frail. If you expect too much of them in one go, they will, they will break, will break. So, I, you play with them and teach them at the same time. Just like in the school, they also play with the teacher, yeah. Play football together or do some game together or camping together, yeah. When the teacher and the student mix together, and then they can uh, learn be better and they're not so scared of the teacher because the teacher cannot avoid sometimes to be serious, right, and to be strict. So if every day is strict like this, the, the student just look at the, the teacher and become tremble, <laughs> trembling already. And then he has no relaxed mind to accept and to uh, uh, understand what the teacher said. Yeah. I think uh, that's why we can uh, grow fast and also stay stable because we play a little bit. <laughs> Don't you think? Yeah. Mm. Share together, okay? Because it's only for me, so not that much. So you just share. It. If you want a lot, then you go down. <laughs> it's hard. Be careful. Share with each other. Yeah. I guess I'm just blessed by whatever you call that power. <laughs> so we have just enough of everything. You know, we don't have to struggle for finance. We don't have to worry whether disciples come or go, uh, many or little. We just let things uh, become natural, you know, the way it is. It runs itself. If uh, disciples come a lot, okay. If they run away, okay. <laughs> and we don't have to struggle for financial uh, aspects so much. Therefore, we, we are very relaxed. And if the disciples like to contribute something of their own, we all let them be so, free, freely. If they don't want to come to view, also freely. Everything is just kind of uh, natural and free. So people feel more relaxed. Yes. I think it is better that way. I have been also in many places, and uh, it seems like too much restraint or too much uh, of, of something, pressure. Huh. So I hope that uh, in one hand, I'm very strict with the disciples, and teach them how to discipline themselves. But on the other hand, I'm not too strict as to give them fear and, and you know what I mean, and pressure that they could not grow. <laughs> For I'm trying, at least not deliberately, to stop their growth and spontaneity. Yeah, not deliberately. And I try very hard in some way 
uh, to uh, relax with them. But this is difficult, huh? Inside, communicate with Master, yes. that is the main thing. Yes, yes, yes. I feel with you, I am communicating. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Everybody feel that about you. <laughs> that you come here, you have only Master in your mind, nothing else. <laughs> Even when you dance yesterday, the monks, they say, when you dance, you never keep your eyes off for Master. <laughs> they say it like that. Uh, that reason I am giving you. Actually, I don't know anything about that song, anything about the dance. Really? Only I know the theme. This is a Ganges nectar. Ah, ah, ah. The theme I knew. Yes. And when I saw you, you were wearing Ganges dresses. Ganges? Dress. Yeah. Ah, they showed yeah. in Mahabharata. The ah. Ganges. They show the Ganges. Ah, ah, ah. They show her in that same dress. Ah, ah. So when I saw you. I became different. Yes. So I I had a devotion for the Ganges yes. and I danced just like that. Just like that. And everybody <laughs> loved it so much. You hear so many applause. Devotion Ganges. <laughs> because I felt I'm dancing before Ganges. Yes, yes, yes. Not before uh, an ordinary person. Yes, yes. <laughs> Understand? I feel like that. Yes, yes. Actually, I didn't know the song. I don't know anything about it. Mm. Just they gave me yesterday. And I danced. Was it the dress of Ganges? No, not yesterday. Uh, not exactly, but similar. Yeah, I yeah. Mean fully white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully white. Give you inspiration. And uh, give me inspiration. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. good. Mm. Mm. This is very good one. The monks made it by our own kitchen. The children monk. Yeah, yeah. Children monk. I will try to enjoy this with you. Mm.